angels, it's Haley Reese and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so grateful that you are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video is yet another Ouija board gone wrong, except this one begins in a way that is unlike any other Ouija board gone wrong encounter that I've dove into. This one raises a lot of questions for me and even more so at the end. So as per usual, I am very interested to hear your guys' take on this experience and what you think happened. Now I always give a disclaimer at the beginning of any of my Ouija board videos, especially my Ouija board gone wrong videos, and that is that I do not believe the Ouija board in and of itself is inherently evil. Well, I personally advise all of my viewers not to play with a Ouija board, especially if you don't know the rules of the Ouija board or the signs to look out for or just really what you're doing in general. I also can understand that there are people who have utilized it as a vessel to communicate to the other side and have had positive and regular experiences and also those who have had no experience at all. It was just simply for entertainment and that is okay. My only warning that I always wanna give in videos of this nature is that dabbling in the other side, reaching out to the other side and calling upon spirits, entities, whatever it may be that you are trying to call upon is very, very real. And as I have said before, when you call upon the other side, you don't always get to decide when that door finally opens. There are people who have reached out to certain entities, reached out to the other side, thought that nothing happened, thought that everything was okay, and then weeks, months, and even years later suffered the consequences of this. So should you decide, especially this spooky season, to pick up a Ouija board and play with it, make sure you're familiar with the rules of the Ouija board, make sure you know the signs to look out for and the, the things that you might see that require you to say goodbye and close out the session. And also just make sure that you know what you're doing and you know how serious it could be, whether you believe in it or not. Now this particular story begins with a college student named Ian. Now it's really important to kind of talk about where Ian was at at this point in his life prior to picking up the Ouija board. I think sometimes in these cases, context and backstory is often important because sometimes it's things leading up to that very moment of trying to make communication that not make it, but that lead to it taking for a darker turn. Ian had grown up in a very religious family, almost so religious that it felt, in his words, kind of shoved down his throat and forced upon him. He almost resented religion solely because he felt like he never really had a choice in finding God himself or, you know, discovering the beauty of religion on his own. It was like, this is how it needs to be. This is the way of the word. This is the way it is. And this is the type of Christian Catholic boy you are going to be raised to be. Actually, I believe he was specifically practicing Catholicism. Now, because of this growing up when he became a teenager, he almost rebelled against his religion. But because he was under his parents' roof and they were extremely strict, he still had to abide by their rules, one of which being he had to attend church every Sunday and he had to hang out with at least one church friend at least once or twice a week. That was the requirement in his home. So because of this, he had developed some church friends and some people that he would associate with solely to do with the church. Now his way of rebelling was finding friends in school that were the opposite of this. Not that they were satanic or into dark rituals or anything of those sorts, but friends who were perhaps atheists or didn't really understand the world of religion. So in a sense, his entire childhood and teenage years were this battle between this light and this darkness, so to speak, in his words, um, which is two very parallel, different worlds. As he went on to college, some of these friends that he'd made in high school, these atheist friends, went to the same college as him, and the group of them still stayed very, very close throughout college. Now, at this particular point in time, his parents had gotten divorced. Now, this was a really big no-no in their church community, and a lot of people in the community were questioning the integrity of his family because this was just unheard of in their small, tight-knit church community. Now, because of this, 
it kind of made Ian repel the church even more. He felt like if his own parents who had preached all of these things of the Bible for all of these years could go on to have this nasty, brutal divorce, who were they to speak on any of this? It actually made him believe even less in all of the things that his parents had been preaching on him all these years. And he felt as though the world didn't make any sense. He was confused and he was lost and he was going through college and you're already going through all the feels at that point in your life anyways. Add insult to injury and Ian's girlfriend of a couple of years and him had split as well. So at this point, he is just feeling incredibly lost. Now October rolls around and his particular college really got into the Halloween spirit. Every single weekend there were events, there were parties, there were things going on every weekend leading up to Halloween. It wasn't just the weekend before or the weekend of Halloween. During even weeknights, there was always something going on. And one particular thing that would happen every Saturday night leading up to Halloween was this abandoned house attraction, so to speak. It wasn't done behind like the city's back. It was actually organized properly, but this abandoned home would have like a Halloween event every Saturday night where each room of the home would have something new to it. So one room was almost like a scary room. Like it was like a haunted house, but it was just a room, if you will. The other room had like different games that you could play like apple bobbing or like all of these different like Halloween type games. There was another room that people could just hang out in, and then there was the room that had other games in it as well, one of which being a Ouija board. Now, this Ouija board wasn't the only Ouija board in the room. There were a couple of different Ouija boards in the room, and they were sat on the floor in separate sections of the room. Around it was kind of like seating area for people to sit on the floor and play together. Now, on the very first opening weekend, Ian and his friends went and his friends decided that it would be so much fun to go to the Ouija board room and see if they could contact the other side. Again, to them, they are atheists. They think that there is no harm, no foul in doing this. They think that it's strictly and purely entertainment. Now at first, Ian hesitated to even do so because despite his upbringing and feeling as though he wanted to repel it, he still had grown up hearing all of these things and knowing that he shouldn't dabble in the occult or try to reach out to the other side in this nature. So a part of him heard his parents' voice in the back of his head and didn't want to do it. But when his friends started to pressure him and he started to carry the weight of the world on him, he decided, what the hell, I have nothing to lose and decided to sit down in that circle and play with his friends. Now immediately, they sat down, they put their hands on the planchette and it started to move. Ian thought that his friends were messing with him because once again, I'll repeat, they were atheists, they didn't believe in this stuff, they thought it was all like hocus pocus just for fun. So he thought that they were messing with him. But very quickly by the looks on their faces and the way they were all asking one another if they were the ones moving it, Ian's thoughts started to change. He started to wonder if perhaps it wasn't his friends doing this. They started making brief contact with what they thought was a spirit and it was saying simple things like, yes, I'm here, yes, I'm dead, yes, I see you. But then it started to spell things out and at one point, it said that it wanted everybody there to leave except for Ian, spelling out leave. And when they asked, who do you want to leave? It said all, and they said, you want us all to leave and it said no, and it said who do you want, they said sorry, who do you want to stay, and it spelt out Ian. Now at this point, Ian starts laughing again, he thinks that they're messing with him, that they're just trying to pull his leg or whatever, but the looks on their faces said otherwise, and they didn't really give him the impression that they were messing with him. Throughout the night, it kept saying that it wanted to talk to Ian, it wanted to talk to Ian, it just kept repeating Ian. But even weirder, it started doing strange things on the board that those who had read the rules would know would be a warning sign. The night was coming to a close. They actually did end up saying goodbye to it and the college students just left and went back home. But Ian couldn't shake the feeling of whatever that was wanting to talk to him. He ended up texting his friends that night asking like, hey, like, let's be real here, joke's over. Were you guys doing that? To which they all replied that they weren't. Ian's mind just kept racing because now for the first time he feels as though perhaps there is another side that maybe there is more to this and what did it want to do with him? 
He thought maybe his prayers were being answered finally, that there was something or someone that wanted to talk to him, maybe make sense of his life for him. And so he counted down the days until the following weekend because he wanted to go back to that Ouija board room and find out why it wanted to talk to him specifically. So he told his friends, we're going back this Saturday. I want to go back to the Ouija board. I want to see what it wants for me. His friends weren't interested in going back to the Ouija board. They said it was boring, that it did what it did for that night. It was the quick little thrill, but that they didn't feel like listening to it say Ian, Ian, Ian again, and that they didn't want to do it. But after convincing, they decided, okay, we will go back one more time so you can see what it wants from you and figure it all out. So that's exactly what they did. They went back that following weekend and they went up to the Ouija board and once again, immediately, it was active. But this time, all it would say was that it wanted everyone to go but Ian. Ian kept asking, what is it that you want to say? You can say it in front of my friends. Tell me, tell me, tell me. But it would say, no, 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 they must go. Like it just wanted his friends to go. All it wanted was Ian in the room. Come the third week, Ian wants to go back again because he's gotten no answers and now he's losing sleep over it. All he can think about is what is this spirit? Who is this spirit? What does it want with me? And why does it need me alone? It's like driving him crazy, which I think it would drive anyone crazy if you're just wondering what they want to tell you. It's like when your friend has like something to tell you, they're like, I'll tell you later. And you're like, no, tell me now. Like I need to know. So he wanted to go back again, but this time his friends were completely over it. They didn't think it was entertaining. They didn't want to do it again. And they said no. So Ian decides to go back on his own and to play on his own, to which he was told he wasn't allowed to occupy a Ouija board on his own. He would have to play with another group of people, but there was nobody else there that he knew and nobody seemed inviting enough to invite him to play. So he decided to just leave. The following day, he still couldn't shake this feeling. So he decided to take himself to the store and purchase his own Ouija board and play it by himself. Now again, going back to Ouija board rules, one of the biggest rules is to never play the Ouija board by yourself, but that is exactly what Ian decided to do. He waited until dark, he pulled out the Ouija board, and he started talking, to which it said, finally. This spirit in Ian started talking almost every single day. It would tell him that his friends weren't his real friends, that he needed to isolate himself, that nothing was real that he was seeing. It was feeding his already fragile mental state these awful things, telling him these terrible things, telling him that his loved ones weren't crossed on and that this was all that there was and just all of these terrible things. And all the while, Ian's friends start noticing he's disconnecting. He's starting to have these bags under his eyes because all he's doing all night long is playing this Ouija board. His parents notice that he's giving these outbursts of anger. While Ian didn't always agree with them and while he didn't always agree with the lifestyle, he was always a respectful kid, but he was not anymore. Ian started to realize that he felt nauseous when he would even look at the church. He did not want to set foot in the church whatsoever. Even though he was now in college and he wasn't required to see his friends once or twice a week from church, he used to keep up with them every once in a while, but now he couldn't even be in the same room as them because he would just see red. He just felt this anger towards them. Ian says he started having these horrible nightmares of these dark, sinister beings. He would see himself laying there in the bed and see himself turning into these monsters, but still it was like an addiction. He couldn't stop using the Ouija board. He couldn't stop talking to whatever this was. And that was another thing. It never told him who or what it was. It never even gave a name. Where this gets even stranger is while they weren't friends, Ian's rebellious friends reached out to some of his church friends saying that despite being atheists, they think something very dark is happening to him. They ended up reaching out to people from the church and also his parents and ended up performing some sort of like an intervention with him to sit down with him and talk to him about what was going on. And that was when they realized he was in the midst of a complete spiritual takeover because he had been playing the Ouija board when he was feeling negative, unwell, no faith, no sense of, of community, no sense of anything. He was in such a vulnerable state playing by himself that this entity 
was able to latch onto him, form an attachment, and prey on his weaknesses. Ian says it took the church months to restore him back to even like a semi of a level-headed state. He was so deep into this dark hole that this entity was creating for him, this darkness that it was showing him, that he felt as though if this went on for any longer, he would have completely lost himself. And only after going through all of the cleansings, going through the church, going through the community, did he admit that this being was trying to convince him through his mind to do dark and sinister things that he would never even dream of on, on his darkest moment prior to ever touching that Ouija board. Even Ian says afterwards he dug more into the Ouija board, he read the rules of the Ouija board and he realized how many he had done wrong, which takes me to the point of he was in a dark space leading up to it. He was vulnerable and he was an easy target for this entity. I've always said if you are going to play the Ouija board and you do know the rules, make sure that you aren't sick, either physically or mentally, even if it's just that you're not in a good mental headspace right now. Do not play with the Ouija board. Do not dabble in the other side. You need to be mentally strong, be able to protect yourself, bubble yourself, and um, make sure that you don't allow anything dark into your energy. Ian says that to this day, he has a newfound faith of his own, especially now that he knows there is good versus evil in the world. And he recognizes that he can have faith without it being exactly what his parents kind of put into him throughout his entire childhood. But he knows that there is light, there is dark. And he was almost a victim of the darkness through the Ouija board. Well, you guys, that is it for today's Ouija board story. I would absolutely love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Again, I am not trying to preach to you. You are more than capable of making your own decisions and reaching out to the other side, however you deem fitting. Just please try to be as safe as possible. Protect yourself in a white light and make sure that you know what you are doing and how very real it is. But that is it for today's video. Make sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you enjoy my content, I would love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember, loves, do all things with kindness. And until tomorrow, I love you. Bye, guys.